Let's do a sketch of a quadric surface. This quadric surface is going to be defined by the equation x squared over 9 plus y squared over 16 plus z squared over 25 equals 1. One of the first things you should know about this quadric surface is 1. It's a quadric surface. What that means is the highest degree polynomial between x, y, and z is to the second degree. Since it's to the second degree, if this were in, let's say, two dimensions, you would say, hey, that's a quadratic equation if it was a two-dimensional function of one independent variable. Here, however, we have three variables, x, y, and z, but none of the variables are higher than the second order. Since they're not higher than the second order, then and the highest degree is a second order degreed term, then we would consider this a quadric surface. Now, we've reviewed quadric surfaces in another video, so take a look if you don't remember what they are. The thing about this quadric surface is we recognize this one to be the quadric surface for an ellipse. Now, you may not recognize that right away. With practice, you will. If we were to try and sketch this ellipse, one thing that would help us dramatically in even recognizing that the surface is an ellipse is to sketch the traces of the surface. Now remember, a trace is the line of intersection between a plane that is parallel to one of the coordinate planes and intersects a surface. So for this, let's construct three traces. Let's construct a yz trace. This will give us a line of intersection in the yz plane. We'll construct an xy trace, which will give us a line of intersection in the xy plane. And we'll construct a zx trace, which will give us a line of intersection in the zx plane. With these three traces, we'll be able to get a good sense for what this ellipse looks like. Let's begin by sketching our, our XYZ rectangular coordinate system. And in fact, just so we can be a little bit more accurate, let's go ahead and do it on some graph paper. The vertical axis will correspond to the Z axis. The horizontal axis will correspond to the Y axis. And the axis coming straight out of the screen will correspond to the x-axis. Let's do a nice consistent scaling on each of the axes. So every one of these divisions will be separated by the next division by one unit along the y-axis, also by one unit along the z-axis. Since the x-axis is coming straight at us out of the page, and since it's skewed a little bit, that one is going to be harder to get a nice consistent scaling. So I'll just guesstimate something that looks roughly like this. Hopefully that'll be close enough. Let's go ahead and determine the x, y, and z intercepts of our ellipse. So to begin with the x-intercept, we know that the x-intercept is going to be found by setting the variables y and z, and z equal to 0. When we set those variables equal to 0, we get the equation x squared over 9 is equal to 1. Solving for x, we get x equals plus or minus 3. Let's put that on our coordinate system. 
here is x equals 3, and here is x equals minus 3. Similarly, for the y-intercept, we're going to set x equals 0 and z equals 0. In doing that, we get the equation y squared over 16 is equal to 1. Solving for y, we get y equals plus or minus 4. Here's y equals plus 4. Here is y equals minus 4. For the z-intercept, it's more of the same, except this time we'll set x equals to 0 and y equal to 0. This gives us the equation the z squared over 25 is equal to 1. Solving for z, we get z is equal to plus or minus 5. So now we have the intercepts of what we are thinking is going to be an ellipse because of the nature of the quadric equation, the quadric surface. If I were to guess, I would guess that the ellipse has, or I, I said ellipse, actually this is an ellipsoid in three-dimensional space. It would be an ellipse in two-dimensional space but an ellipsoid is what we call it in three-dimensional space. Well, now that we have the intercepts of the ellipsoid, let's see if we can sketch it. Now to sketch it, we're gonna sketch it by beginning with the various traces. Now, as we've said earlier, a trace is the line of intersection between a plane that is parallel to one of the coordinate planes and the surface in question. Now that line of intersection will often produce a recognizable shape. If the, if, if the intersection between the plane and a quadric surface occurs, then the line of intersection will typically be one of the conic sections that we're familiar with from previous, from, from previous semester. Well, let's begin by doing a YZ trace. So to do a YZ trace, let's choose the plane that is parallel to the YZ axis. So I am going to do a plane. If it's parallel to the yz axis, then a normal vector would be a vector that points in the positive x direction. Well, let's do, if we're doing the yz trace, then that is going to be the plane with the equation x equals 0. Setting x equals to 0 in our equation gives us y squared over 16 plus z squared over 25 is equal to 1. Notice that the yz trace is the equation of an ellipse. And this is an ellipse in the yz plane. Being an ellipse, we have a major axis of 5, a total length of 10 on the major axis, and a minor axis of 4, or a radius on the minor axis of 4, along the y-axis. If we were to sketch this ellipse in the yz plane, it would look similar to this. And this corresponds to our yz trace. Let's do another trace. Let's do the xy trace. In doing the xy trace, 
we would do a plane that is parallel to the xy coordinate plane. So that plane parallel to the xy coordinate plane is going to have a vector perpendicular to it that is parallel to the z-axis. So the plane for a, <laughs> the equation of a plane in the xy plane is simply z equals zero. Setting z equals to zero in our quadric equation gives us x squared over nine plus y squared over 16 is equal to one. Well, notice this is just an equation of another ellipse, except this ellipse is in the xy plane. The major axis has a length of 8, and the minor axis has a length of 6. Sketching this in the xy plane would produce an ellipse that looks something like this. And notice that's now looking a lot like an ellipsoid, an egg, if you will. With this, I think we're pretty convinced that we have an ellipsoid. However, let's just do one more trace. The last trace is going to be the zx trace. The zx trace is obtained by taking a plane that is parallel to the zx plane. That plane that is parallel to the zx plane will have a unit vector that is parallel to the y-axis and perpendicular to the zx plane. So our zx trace is going to have the value y equals zero describing the plane. Well, that's not the trace, that's the equation for the plane. So now plugging that into our quadric equation, we get an equation that is x squared over nine plus z squared over 25 is equal to one. We have a third ellipse. This ellipse is in the zx plane. Adding that to our sketch gives us a little bit more perspective. That ellipse in the zx plane looks something like this. And now we've completed our sketch of an ellipsoid given by the quadric surface x squared over 9 plus y squared over 16 plus z squared over 25 is equal to 1. And I want you to notice how our ellipses in each of the coordinate planes, for this example, happens to pass through the intercepts. I don't think we really needed to plot the intercepts in this, in this example, other than to maybe it helps fixes out fix our eyes onto where the ellipse is and its shape and perspective. But in general, whether I think I need an intercept or not, I'll typically plot it if one exists to give me more information. And at a minimum, I'll do a trace, at least two traces parallel to two different coordinate axes. For now, we've completed our sketch. Well done.